changes or anything? None. Okay. Next, approved minutes. The minutes of March 25th, 2019. Make a motion and we approve it. Second. I have a motion and a second. I wanted to ask Erica, did you want to know if there was anybody who was a guest who was not on the list? Um, I usually take it whatever's off the okay. pad. They didn't sign in. They didn't sign in, so right. it doesn't matter. Right. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. <clears throat> Next, community concerns. Do you have any community concerns tonight? Seeing none, we move to liquor control. I believe we have some. Make motion to the board of liquor control. Second. Need a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So passed. So we have renewals. Two renewals tonight. Um, one Hoagies and the other is the Ryder Brook, the 10th whole Ryder Brook uh, golf course. Golf course, yeah. And both stayed the same. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll make the motion we approve them. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion to pass. Do I hear a motion to come out? Make a motion to come out and wait for the Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So pass. Next, old business. Approve the net metering project for Novus Energy. Welcome. Um, hey guys. Want to introduce yourself? Uh, Alex Provacus from Novus Energy. I uh, was here a couple weeks ago about uh, 150 we're doing in the battle. Yes. Um, as promised, you know, between these and the last meeting or when Alex was here at the last meeting, I've met with uh, Craig Mott, the general manager. Um, they are doing a solar project. They are going to do um, a community solar as a piece of that which is similar to what the Monoelectric Co-op does, where people will be able to literally buy the panels right. um, that are there. Um, it, but Craig admitted that he can't meet the terms, so he can't meet the conditions. Um, he can't compete with it. He can't compete with this offer. Right. So, um, and, and that's just the nature. I mean, any utility will tell you that you know, that meeting is not necessarily good for the utility um, right. because they're paying more for electricity, but it's great for us as the customers is basically what it is. So right. this does um, realistically stabilize our utility prices for 20 years, 20 years um, and uh, lowers the cost for our electricity and, um, for the, the taxpayers. Yeah, I researched it too and <clears throat> couldn't really find any cons. Right. So, yeah. No. Win-win for us. Yeah. And as far as utilities not liking it, I mean, it really becomes an issue when you have a lot of these going out. I mean, this this one project represents one half of one percent of Morsel Water Light's load. Right. So it's a really small amount of power here we're talking about. Um, so it's it's a win-win, I think. But good use for the space and good good use for the town. Yeah, my only question was: there anybody that was opposed to the project in the community? I haven't heard anybody step forward. No, no, because we, we've gone through the Certificate of Public Good process and we're waiting for it to come out. Any issues that would have come up would have come up there and we haven't had a single issue. Right. Yeah, that's what's on. Yeah. So this would be for this building and maintenance? This is for all of our electric bills. With the exception being um, the street lights that we already have a prior existing agreement with, um, where they're actually just, we bought the LED street lights, and we have a payback period on those lights. But everything that's on a meter right now, press covers. Yeah. Anything, that's <clears throat> anything on a meter. Yeah. So it's um, the, the PD, EMS, highway. Um, we do have some street lights that are still metered. Mm -hmm. um, anything that's on, yeah. Yeah, those are the main ones. Yeah. Alec, just for uh, the meeting and people that may be watching, would you explain again where it is? Sure, it's on uh, Elizabeth Lane which um, is right off of 100 there, is, uh, is an old gravel pit that's been reclaimed. Um, there's potential use for some housing in there in the future, but this takes up less than an acre out of a 20 plus acre area. Um, it can't be really seen by anybody, can't be seen by the road. Uh, it's, it's really a great, great spot for solar. Uh, it's got great southern exposure as well, so it's going to also be an efficient system. Yeah. And what size is that? What's it's a 150 kW system, AC. Yeah. Good. 
Is there any comments about it? Mm -hmm. I believe Brian. No, sounds good. Sounds good to me. Do we need a motion? You do it. Please authorize me to uh, uh, sign any agreements. I make a motion that we go into agreement with them and have them sign it. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So fast. Thanks, well, thank you. And this is why I have you here for a second. You folks will take about half of the power of this project, maybe a little more. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions of who you would think I should reach out to for the remainder of it? I don't know if hospital. We could reach out to the hospital. I know they're part of the system already. Uh, we reached out to them pretty early on. We would, we could go back there. I didn't know if there was, but that's that's a good suggestion. What about the schools? We can reach out to the schools again as well. Yeah, last time we went to them, uh, there was some budget issues they were dealing with, so they yeah. wanted to. Start. MSI, maybe. What's that? MSI. MSI. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay, great. Mr. Bean, Sheriff's Department for their dispatch center. Go ahead, Bill. What the Sheriff's think? Department for their dispatch center. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good idea. That's a great idea. Great. Right. Thanks, Thanks Alan. Thanks very much. <clears throat> All right, move to new business. Number one, discuss accepting Belanger Lane as the town road. Chris, I guess that's why you're here. Right. Oh, right. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I just found out about about four thirty. Yeah. 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 Uh, didn't know it was on the agenda tonight. But. Yep. Do you want to explain? Explain. I uh, can. Yeah. I mean, it's, we've got uh, there's eight lots up there on Belanger Lane, and yeah. there's six houses that are currently already built. Um, the road was put in, started around 2003, and completed by 2010, I think roughly it was. And it was intended for the, it was built to the town standards and their road policy at the time. And it was intended for them to take it over, but we couldn't approach them to take it over until we had like three houses, which we didn't have until 2016. And by then they'd already changed their rules. Right. So is it still a town standard to now? There's the only thing that wasn't uh, finished was the the 50 foot paved apron off the highway. Um, right at the beginning there. Right. Yeah, he was waiting until all the bypass work was done and everything, and yeah. and um, was hoping you know the, most of the bulk of all the construction, and then of course then it fell through and the town wasn't taken over anyway. So there's that, and there's a few trees in the right of way that he opted to leave that at such time will come out. That's not a problem. Okay. But we would schedule Just for a point of reference, what I did was I, I put your the existing policy before 2016 was in there when the, the town required the <coughs> houses and some other things like that. And I put your current policy well, right now it's as a case by case basis. And just to give you a reference point about how the bill at that point in time what the policy was. And then uh, a couple months ago, we had a discussion, you know, about taking over roads. There's not, there hasn't been any changes, and I know we're still working through it. But you know, the, the, the email came in. I think it still makes sense um, to have the schedule just like we would for normal road taking, so we can do the on-site hearings. And then you can come back and have a discussion on whether you want to accept it or not. So you know. It, Right now, it's a case by case basis. Right. So um, that kind of kicks off the process. Donnie got me the email early in the season, um, so that you know once we can, hopefully, it'll stop snowing here shortly. <laughs> <laughs> but it takes us a while because you're, you know even by the time we get it in the papers, there's still 30 day notice that we have to notify everybody for the on site hearing. So you're really looking for 45 to 60 days before that we can actually schedule the on site piece of that. So. Um, and then the board can review what they want for a policy along the way, if they want to change it or just keep it as it is. Or, you know. mm -hmm. But that's the reason why I put the old policy in there for you to review as well. Right. So you can see what it was built to. And that, was, that was the expectation at, at the time when, when it was constructed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I make a motion that we start to proceed, have Dan set up a, a so site that will start it and see how it goes. Do we need a set of motion? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Okay, second. Yeah. All right, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Go so fast. 
Thank you. Next, discuss and improve zoning fee direction. See that. Jim, I see you're here tonight. Welcome. How are you folks? Good, how are you? Good. I read, I read the uh, yeah. description here. You want to? I, you know, I, I don't have a lot to add, but I would emphasize is we're not asking you to do anything you don't think you can do or you don't think that you should do. Um, right. But if, if that's discretionary, um, you know, uh, it's a significant fee. Um, we're here for two reasons. Um, this is, we're kind of at the end. Yeah. You know, we're going to start construction here pretty quickly, and we're agog at the total cost of fees and professional services to date. Um, you know, we've made a couple of attempts recently with uh, the state, specifically the Department of Public Safety. We had to do a reapplication fee there uh, because of the project change, because of length of time getting the project underway, and um, so. You know, we're at the point where we're keeping this thing on budget as best we can. We're 12 months into permitting. Um, uh, we do think there's going to be a significant public benefit for this. Um, uh, and so, you know, if it's within your discretion, we think it's a reasonable exercise in that discretion. Mm -hmm. We're not looking for the way, obviously. Uh, and, you know, and we're, we're, we're happy to. Uh, Take it however you determine your offer down. Okay. You have any comments? Yeah, you know, Todd and I have actually talked about this, and this is actually a good problem for, for the town because we never anticipated when this fee structure was set up, and Todd thinks by getting this wrong, just time in for me. Um, <coughs> because the, the fee structure is built on a square foot, and this is the largest building they believe in Memorial County. Um, and what we realize is we have a problem with our fee structure. What we want to do is build a graduated one or cap it. You know, it, you, the fee structure is set up to help us recoup our costs for having the hearings and the warnings and postings. Obviously, that fee structure, the fee that we have charged it, covers way more than that. So, you know, it, it's, it, it is it's an exorbitant fee, I think, in both of our professional opinions on that. Um, and we realize that we have a problem with that, but once again, it's a good problem because we have the things that we need going on with our grant list for growth and for job opportunity to be here too. So, um, you know, I, I think it's appropriate to reduce the fee. Todd really, and I really didn't come up with an amount, but I, I don't think the intent of the fee is to make money for the town. The fee is to help us cover the cost of getting through the permit process. Did I say that right, Todd? We'll, we'll start. So how do we proceed? You and Todd get together and come up with a... Well, I don't want to hold him up because they're, they're kind of waiting on us. We just got this request last week. Um, we, we, we could take it, you know, Todd was nice enough to issue a permit. The, the fee hasn't been collected because we don't know what it is. It will be collected very promptly after you determine what it is. The appeal period is running. We don't have a problem with you taking the time. You, 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 you need to discuss and think about it. That's not holding us right. my, my only issue is uh, <clears throat> I feel like I have to recuse myself because of my connection with MSI and Concept 2 and the perception there, you know, and yeah. it's part of my interest too, you know? Yeah. So if you could wait till there's a full board, I think I, you know, I, don't, I don't see a problem with that. The appeal period is going to run. Um, it's, so much of MSI's business is Concept 2. No, I know. It's, yeah. I don't know what you mean. And so. But, Rather have it be uh, better safe than sorry on that. I agree. Right. Um, but I, you know, after giving it some thought, I realized, you know, Garrett understands too, you know, so yeah. I'll, I'll chat with him about it some more. But I, I would have to recuse myself, so we need a, another board member unless Eric comes in. But Happy to have it taken up. Um, Welcome to why don't meeting. we do this? Todd and I will get together, figure it out, and figure it out. That way, we can come back and um, I think even in this particular case, we can you know figure out an amendment to the fee structure to account for this. And then you know, once again, I don't. We're not here to make money off of this. This right. is what we do. And I do think it's a reasonable argument to say that if you folks had thought of a gradiated structure, 
yeah. you would have done something different, but nothing came along right. until this one to point out the fact that you didn't think of a gradiated structure. But it could in the future, for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. My my thoughts is making sure that when you come up with this, if there's anybody else that has been affected by this, that we try to fix it for them too, and going forward, it's everybody's equal. Right. Todd, you have the comment. I figured I had about 25 hours into this, and there's some your board member time too, so um, the fee is supposed to be commiserate with the time expense it takes the town to process such an application. So I, I think if you're going to do 25 to 30 hours of my time plus some expense for town or everything else, I think that's very fair. That's more than fair. Yeah. But I think we're better off having a fee structure so that we're not just cap it. Yeah. yeah. So that we cap and then realizing what that is, I think we. Can take that time investment that you have in the project more time posting <coughs> and go, all right, you know, this is gonna be the most that we're ever gonna do and then we can come up with a cap on that. Yeah, I can't yeah. imagine a process like a project gonna spend three straight weeks on it. It's just not gonna happen here. So I, I, this is a long time on this one and that's pretty much this is one of the things I get. I, I can report that the state has taken three such fees without blushing at all. <laughs> right. So we'll have them get together and figure it out, and then we can vote on it the next yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we, Todd, issued the permit, but we've been holding the recording because we don't record documents till we get paid. Right. Are you? Should I go ahead and record it, knowing that we will get paid? Can you can you pay the recording fees? Or just ten bucks. Yeah, we can pay the recording fees, and then we can adjust the zoning. And, and we don't have a hard deadline for recording until the end of this month. Our okay. closing okay. is scheduled for April 30. Okay. Yeah, I didn't realize we were going to have a another member here. Yeah, so. no, I understand. Yeah. I just don't want to hold us not recording. Right, right, and yeah, they're going to be doing. So I think it would make sense to go ahead and pay the recording fees. We can do that. When you, but is it signed out that you that the fees have been paid when you? I'm not worried about getting money from Jim. It's not an issue. So yeah, if you want to take the recording, you can record it to ten dollars. I mean, there's another twelve thousand dollars on the yeah. state, so I'll deal with that separately. Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. All right, next, discuss Morristown Cemetery Association. Jane, that's thank you for coming. Well, we kind of realized, uh, first of all, you all know Jane, who's our secretary treasurer. Uh, I am the president of the association, and for full transparency, I also work part-time at Faith Funeral Home. So I am also connected with the same series in that way. Uh, we are responsible for the seven small cemeteries around the town. Uh, basically everything except Pleasant View up at the end of Congress. We've got seven small cemeteries. We wanted to kind of give you a state of the cemeteries, if we could. We haven't been to see the folks for a little while. Uh, we were hoping to have some better numbers, but we haven't been able to get into the cemeteries yet. So. Uh, this is kind of going to be a general thing. Uh, I see you do have the list. Yeah. Uh, basically what that list is, when we held our end of the year meeting uh, in October last fall, Brian wasn't able to be at the meeting. Uh, he is our uh, select board liaison. Uh, so I made up some, basically some notes for him, and we've kind of been working from that. Um, the thing you're going to hear repeatedly is problems with labor and problems with money. Um, I think Jane will, and please, anytime, um, I think Jane will uh, tell us that uh, we're not hurting for money. We're, uh, we're actually hurting for labor more. Uh, so we could hire people to do it, but then we're going to be hurting for money. So it's uh, one hand washing the other, I guess. Uh, we definitely will be, be hurting someday because people just are not buying lots anymore. 
and when they do buy a lot, um, there can be f up to four cremations on one lot. So people are buying a quarter of, of what they used to. So the, the money flow just is not there. Uh, we would like someone as a laborer, kind of like Mike up at the Pleasant View, except we don't need full time, we don't need, you know, that type of thing. If we can hire mowers who can do some of the work, uh, you folks do give us the money for the mowing. We've got some now that we could do some of these jobs, but eventually, uh, you know, we would have to come to you for more money to, to pay someone. Um, I'd like to, if I could, just quickly go through this list. Uh, I heard Judy say that uh, she, she would like a little explanation of it. Um, now, grouping one and two together, there are some trees down at Lakeview, which is the cemetery down in Cadiz Falls by the power plant. Uh, some trees went down there about a year and a half ago. Uh, we asked for some help to get them cleaned up and have not been able to get any yet. Um, up at Mountain View Cemetery, which is the one in Morristown Corners. We have a problem on the first driveway. It's a very steep hill, and people that go in that way tend to dig it up, and then it ends up washing out in the rain. We had originally asked for some stay mat, which we were told wasn't possible, so we asked for some one-way signs so that people would go in the further driveway and come out the nearer one. Um, that's been about two years and we haven't been able to make any any headway there. So, um, you know, we're just, we're asking for a contact person that we can get some of these simpler jobs done. Um, if I could, I'd like to group number three and number eight. Um, this is the big problem in any cemetery, trees. Uh, we're all familiar with the job that was done up at Pleasant View at the end of Congress Street there. Uh, well, we do not have one cemetery that's got anywhere near that type of a job. I'm guessing in our seven cemeteries, we probably have more than that job. Um, it's too bad, I mean, I know God plants most of the trees and they should have been taken out at a reasonable size. Now, especially those big white pines, um, we did some four or five years ago and they were like $1,700 a tree. I guess somebody said the one that you had taken down, down by the noise house, was over $2,000. Um, that's going to eat into what money we've got real quickly, real quickly. Uh, there are I did a, last fall I did kind of a rough count and there are like a dozen or fifteen that should come out soon. In and, all the cemeteries? And uh, yeah, in the, in the total of the seven. And another dozen or fifteen, uh, you know, within a couple of three years, something like that. We probably could put it off a little ways. but. Uh, there's a, a chance of not only breaking historic stones, old stones, uh, hey, there is a chance of somebody getting hit when a limb falls if they happen to be visiting there. So that, that is our big problem and that is going to be our big expense coming going forward. 
Uh, number four has actually, I guess, been taken care of, Dane. You have been talking um, about an RFP from the yeah, that's, that's 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 actually, we double checked and we, we sent it to the newspaper, they didn't do it, so we, we mailed it out to some of the contractors. Okay. Um, back in the past, the town did the hiring. Uh, then, for an obvious reason, they asked us to do it. But we we just don't have the the main power and the money to do it anymore. Uh, so they has taken that back for us. Um, Jane, I'd like you to step in for a minute. Um, one of the problems is, uh, as I say, Jane is our secretary treasurer, and finance flow has become a problem. Um, working with not only uh, the, the town office, but with the sexton who sells the lots and collects fees and things. Um, Jane, could you tell them what you have worked out? So the, the system that we have in the town office, the software system that's here, is very antiquated, as Sarah will tell you. And the records themselves which is a problem across all town clerk's offices, it appears from the meetings that we go to, is a problem getting the documentation in there and recording, not so much recording when a, a lot is sold, but when burials happen, you're supposed to record where they are, who's there, so that you know who can be buried ongoingly. That is a real problem. Um, the paperwork that, that comes from Mark to the town clerk's office and to me um, is few and far between. I have to beg and beg and beg to get it here and then I'm going to be just a, a name of who was buried, what the cemetery is, no law information at all. So their records are faulty, but no fault of them because they're trying to get it the same way that I'm trying to get it is begging. And it's all up in Mark's head so if something happens to Mark, the records are, are gone. Um, getting the amount, um, we finally got $400, finally, last week, the week before, and finally dropped it off, which was due for burials in 2018. So, I mean, I've offered to, to go and pick it up, just write the check, we know what it should be, um, no response, so it's, it's an issue getting that flow. So, um, I'm trying to figure out a way to make that better and I know he gets paid a certain amount, whether it's pay as you go, you know, you get the paperwork in, you get a certain amount that way, I don't know exactly, but that's that's an issue. And I know Sarah's looking at some um, software, new software that we've been looking at, getting information on through the Vermont Cemetery Association meetings. Um, but that's going to be a pretty significant expense because they come in and they they go through all the old maps, try to pull information from them, what's there to update that. So from what we have, them scanning and looking and dealing with that, it's, it's going to be a big change. So um, that would be a ton of sense, but we don't have a number yet. Um, looking at what we have in our account, um, we have about 120, $123,000 that we have designated as endowment, so to speak, money not to spend. I'm supposed to be spending the interest of that. Um, a few years ago when I came on, we did change the policy based on what Pleasant View kind of did, is we set a minimum balance that we don't want to go below. And then every year adjust that for, for cost of living. So it goes up. So right now that we set it at 70,000, it's gone up to 76.4. So we are, we've said that we don't ever want to go below that. If we had to use the money above that, we technically could vote to do that. Um, so having said that, there's 122000 there. Right now in our operating account, we have um, 4000 set aside for the mowers for May and June. It gets paid fiscally from the town. We've set aside um, $500 for mountain cornerstones that are in a new um, Cremation only lots that we've designed to get some cornerstones for those and fencing $450 at Randolph. 
So we have $21,000 that we have to play with, so to speak, in the upcoming, upcoming um, summer. One of the big tree issues um, in Dennis is that wheeler. There's a tree that is dead at the top, the like, limbs are, are down and continue to fall. I hope to have that down in the fall, but that didn't work out. I've been trying to get prices. And part of, part of the issue is I don't have time to deal with trying to deal with tree companies. And I tried to deal with one, didn't get anywhere. It took a ton of time. I've been emailing with um, the person that took down the tree at the noise house. That's $2,400, but still it's trying to coordinate it and when you can do it and dealing with, with Gary Greaves, who was a property that it has to be dropped on, and there's another tree that we wanted to take down. Gary doesn't want us to take it down because, or I don't know why, but we can't take that one down. So that's a, the hazard right now because you can just see that there's it's ready to fall and there's there's stones underneath it. So um, don't really quite know where to go with that yet. Right. Um, <clears throat> so it's just timing. It's it's pretty much Dennis and I that are doing it, and those are the maintenance things. I just, I, I don't have the expertise or the, the time to try to figure those out. I don't know whether I should get more treat bids. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the recommendation would be for that. So, you know, we've tried to look at old stones as well, the real historic ones where we know there's no family left that have broken off and get those fixed as we go along. So there's, there's those, those cost about $250 each. And we know we're gonna have some um, this summer for that. Um, I know in our, at Wheeler, Fred and I are, are willing to go in and, and straighten a lot of them are, that are falling over, but we need some topsoil or some, some dirt to do that. You know, how do we get that unloaded kind of thing. So those, these are just some things that we're dealing with and we're not really sure how to get them done without guidance or, or help or suggestions or yeah it doesn't look like there's a lot of money above your your uh, operating expenses every year you know right. that fluctuates depending on what does what your fund earns for interest all that yeah you know, that makes it hard going back to the maps um, right now in many cases mark is working off hand-drawn maps which probably Jack White set up back in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. And those maps are in terrible shape. But, um, we've, we've got to get them onto, onto a computer or something that uh, we can work with. Um, three people, I believe in 2005, three people went through and kind of did an inventory upgrading the maps. Yeah. And I don't think they've been touched since, so uh, they don't have anything to work from. That was Gloria Francis and Doug Churchill. Churchill. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, a situation we've had, I think, the last couple of years, and we're going to have much more often, number seven on your list. Uh, People don't understand that they have a deed to their law. And I believe, I meant to bring mine tonight just to read it, but um, the deed is for, for instance, Dennis and Lorinda Smith and heirs. Um, I'm, does, Sarah, do you know, does it say assigned? I'm trying to think. No, no, not necessary. Um, the, I know that it, do you mean, it assigns it to the, your heirs if you've passed? But you can that? I assign it to someone else? Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it says assign. Okay. Um, we've had a couple of situations where people don't understand that with the, with the modern family set up, um, Okay, Dennis and Lorinda bought the lot. Uh, they get divorced. 
somebody is living with Dennis. Uh, they don't get married, nothing like that. Well, that never happens. Come yeah. on. Well, the deed never gets changed. The deed still says Dennis and Lorena. So my girlfriend has no place to be buried unless I do remember to assign her or whatever. But people don't understand this. Um, it may take a real good education program, I'm not sure. Um, I know in the past, for better lack of a name, lot swapping was allowed. Right. Because uh, back in, I believe, the 70s, um, where our lots are down at Randolph Cemetery, uh, we had to swap some around to help a friend, and it was done. Mm -hmm. But apparently it may have been not correct. Right. Um, so we do have to come up with either a way to make it possible or a better education program so that people understand um, what, what needs to happen. Uh, let me see, uh, Jane mentioned it, but uh, just for your information, we now do have cremation only lots at Mountain View up in uh, Waterstown Corners and the Randolph Cemetery down on uh, Newland Road. Uh, they are smaller lots for one or two urns. They are a substantially less cost. Uh, the only uh, stipulation, if you will, because they are so small, they have to have flat ground level markers uh, because markers would be too close together for the moors. Um, Randolph isn't quite done. As we all know, the snow came early last year and I didn't get a chance to finish it. I hope to this spring. We have already sold, I think, two of the lots up in more sound corners. So hopefully we can save some money and some space if it does work out. Um, basically what we're using is leftover area that can't be used for full burials. So we're trying to use that Excellent. in an efficient way to to keep that moving. So, uh, in summation, as I say, we, we're in pretty good shape right now. Uh, we just wanted to let you know that soon we're going to need help. It's, uh, we appreciate you bringing an overview to us. It makes me think, I'm wondering if Dan could help um, with, if you had a specific list of the things like, like the signs, mm -hmm. um, or, or moving the tree limbs that are down, and uh, Dan could help you coordinate getting that. They, they brought that to me, and I just give it a draw. I think what happens is we get gone, and right, the, the next thing comes up for rolling, and right, and it just they keep rolling on. So I'll give it a draw, and I'll make sure. Right, and there's a, that, a whole list of everything that, that it's going to involve for projects that we can help you with. Um, even some of the things that you mentioned. Well, I'd like to have them snow is go out and take a really good yeah. full inventory of how many stones are broken, estimated at 250, you know, all the trees, right. so that mm -hmm. we can come back with a, this is the total that it would be, this right. is what we have, so do we, can we put off some until next year and then put in a new bit, you know, a new estimate for town meeting or whatever, right. for the extra money. I mean, we were at the point where we're contemplating, you know, should we give this up and give it to the town in order to, to get these things done, right. you know. Right. But we're, you know, we don't want to if we don't right. have to, but. Well, we appreciate know. what you guys do. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I know I'm speaking for all of us, but just things like the topsoil, you know, Dan could help with that, you know. But they do help with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, the one thing I think we're, they're looking for, which I've talked to them and I thought it was a good idea, you've got mowers that we have a contract with. Okay, they mow. They don't pick up brush and, and right. branches while they're there. Well, maybe during the time we can put in a clause in there that 
if they do it, that we can pay them extra. Right. But well, the biggest there. thing is to get people that can see that this needs to happen, or Dennis can call somebody that you know you need to go out and do this, and maybe somebody that can go out. We were at the time talking about we've been off, and I said Mike Day could have found time to do the seven you know once in a while. Right. But somebody like Mike maybe later on that can go and coordinate this stuff for you. Yeah. Or just something like a branch falls, and so the mower's more around it, but yeah. they, they don't pick it up. You know, I mean, that's, yeah. doesn't I mean, make sense. You know, we pulled some of the months before this year, but I mean, looking at that tree the same way that the, the tree guy's saying, you know, it's a widow maker, you know, I've got to yeah. go up and turn those off, so it's like I don't want to be standing under it anymore than I have no. to either. So no. it's. And, and just to let you know, I think we're down to six members on our board. Yeah. And one of those is my 97-year-old mother who's up in the manor, and uh, we have two or three people, 70s and 80s, and so, you know, we can, we can do the planning and stuff, we can see the problems, but we just can't fix them. She can't plant trees. They have a lot of knowledge, though. It's very yes. helpful. Yes. Have you thought about asking Vermont Fender Work Program to pick up your branches and all that stuff? I wonder about uh, that. We would rather not discuss Vermont Fender Program, if that's okay. Um, we have used them in the past, and it was a total loss. It was... They work out well. Yeah, it did not work out at all. They, they, they couldn't get people to work. Um, it ended up the mowing was done by Brian and at the time Jason Kelly was working with him and those two ended up doing all of the mowing. Uh, they just, the people that they get to work don't show up for work. Uh, it's, it, it was going to be a great project. They were going to clean stones for us and they, and they got no workers. Well, if you can work with Dan, I think, and uh, get a better list of exactly what what you guys need you know, to get you up to date, you know, for you know, something like that's going to cost X amount to do, so we can look at it and give it some thought about it. Uh, we we want to help you. Is there anything, I know the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts couldn't take down trees, but is there something that they could take on as a community project? I, I'd have to think about it, I guess. I think, you know, anything that that would need to be done probably would be a little above what they could do. Yeah, yeah. it probably would involve power equipment. Yeah. But we could, you know, we could think about things well, that do need well, doing. Boy's got leader right back there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I was going to say, I don't know. If there's a, a high school was looking for, they have a um, community day of service in May, and they're looking for projects where they can um, donate time. If there's anything That's moving topsoil, well, they know. they need supervision. Yeah, because and they per, they want something for a group of kids to do. Yeah, yeah. It's Does this have to be within walking distance? I don't know. But I can find out or, or get you the information. Have you got to give it to Dan and he can talk to you. Or if the board has any projects. Everything you do. Yeah. I want to say too, and then again, we appreciate <coughs> it. I know what you guys have done. With them, but, yeah. but the other thing is, don't be afraid to come and ask us because we do want to help you. Yeah. We, we right. don't want you to get burned out. So we, We'd like you to stay as long as you just soon stay, but we don't want to make you stay. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yes. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Because they get it. If they walk yeah. away, we'll have it all. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Uh -huh. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Next, approval warrants. Make a motion to approve warrants. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> so fast. Yeah. Dan, the <coughs> report. In, in light of the, the, the special meeting night, and I don't have a tier report tonight. So. That's perfect. Yeah. Any questions for Dan? No. Hearing none, select board concerns. Judy. I have none. Brian. 
I had somebody in Stowe approach me today about what we could do to get the state involved in fixing the road between the Stowe and one set. Um, actually, I just got a letter today that is signed with the Canadian Project. Now I don't have a schedule on it. So I, I know, you know they have plan to pay that, but I don't know what the schedule is on yeah. I mean, I can call and see if I can get it. Uh, he said we could all get a petition together to kind of help you. They have a plan. <laughs> okay. They have release it. Now. A lot of car bills, maybe. <laughs> yeah. All right. Eric. That is it. I'm good. <laughs> Welcome, Eric. That wasn't here long enough to do a complaint. <laughs> all right. I'm all set. Any other business? I want to let you guys know that um, myrec.com, the, the new recreation software program, is live. We went live a week ago. We had a soft opening over the weekend. We already had 20 kids sign up in um, a day for the online registration. If you want to check it out, there's a link now on the website, thanks to Erica. But, um, and we're running all of Trisha's activities um, through it in like the garden now you can sign up online and you want to be a sponsor for Wednesday Night Live or um, you know Rocktoberfest everything that we did by hand and either Tina or I kept Excel spreadsheets is now in one place it's pretty cool great that's good okay any other business I want to tell you I'll be here tomorrow what 745 yes Yes. 645. I was, that's why I was going to say that. No, I won't be here. 745. Yeah. All right. Do I hear a motion? I'll be here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Make a motion. We adjourn. Can you say All in say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Media is adjourned. At 546. <laughs> <laughs>